Good day, good day. I would like to extend my greetings to the honorable guests, the participants, the delegates and the community at large. It is such an honor to be one of the speakers for this event. And uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me. Um, before I start with my presentation, I would like to actually say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We are so grateful um, for your perseverance, for your teachings, for your love, for your sacrifices, and all other beautiful things that you're doing um, for us, for your children. Our hearts are full of gratitude. Thank you so very uh, much. Um, the title of my presentation today is Make You Work. And Make You Work, it's, it's not about a job or anything of that nature, but it's about what you envision for yourself. It's very intrinsic, it's very subjective. Um, how do you define success for yourself? And how can you then align your mindset, your skill set, um, your habits to get the results that, that you want in your, in your life? So the reason I'm saying that is very subjective is because uh, today I'll focus more on an individual. Uh, I'm aware that there is a collective responsibility, sorry about that, but for today, I'll focus more on the individual responsibility. Uh, how I wish I was with you today, but there, there's a trip that I couldn't, uh, or I was not able to cancel. Uh, I'm actually in transit as we're speaking, but I've managed to get a quiet uh, room <laughs> while I'm in transit so that we can uh, connect on this special uh, day. Um, just a bit of background about myself. I'm originally from Eastern Cape, Epizana. Actually, my father is from Epizana and my mother is from Mtata. And uh, while we were younger, some part of our lives, we were in a flex staff. So we said flex staff for some time and then some of us are Epizana. So that's where I grew up. I did my primary there and my high school there, Bizana village. Uh, this is my family. These are my parents um, and my sister. My brother is not here. He's actually the first born, followed my, my sister. And then I'm the, the, the last born. Uh, so these are the people that, you know, uh, I encountered, you know, the first community that I encountered as, as a young person so the lessons of which I'm so grateful I learned from them, you will see they are part of me. Um, the lessons I'm, I learned from this community called family, and then the lessons that I learned from the community at Bizana, from a flex staff. Then uh, after high school, I then went to UCT, the University of Cape Town. I was there for my undergrad. And, and getting to UCT for me was more of a, a, a sweet, bitter pill uh, because you know when you're from um, rural areas there are certain things you don't have for example I'm in science and uh, I was doing physical science and biology but you know we, we never had a, a lab so everything was so theoretically um, so getting to, to university now I had to learn how to use a microscope and that was not, you know, the time for that. It was time for practical, but you know, the fundamentals and the basics in my first year, I spent a lot of time, both in, in um, chemistry and biology, you know, I had to, to learn the fundamentals uh, when I was doing my, my first year from, from the practical aspect of things. However, I have enjoyed the journey, I've enjoyed the ups and downs. So after UCT, I then went to, uh, vets uh, to do my PhD from vets. I went to the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. That's where I was working. Uh, actually, they were sponsoring me for my um, studies. 
And then the agreement was when I complete, I have to work, you know, for CSIR, not for free, of course, <laughs> I was getting salary. Uh, and then from there, I went to 20 University of Technology, where I was a lecturer and researcher there. And currently I'm at the Vol University of Technology where I'm a project manager and senior lecturer. So in a nutshell, that's me. And in terms of um, what has uh, structured uh, my mindset and skill set and the doing and the being, um, it's definitely the people, you know, that uh, are in my sphere. It's also the books that I'm reading. Um, from a very young age, I liked reading books. I liked reading books because they were a window for me, for the life that I envisioned for myself. They were a tool uh, that I used to motivate myself and especially books, biographies and books that are talking about the importance of being and the importance of doing, you know, uh, while you are navigating uh, through the ever-changing future. So those are the books that uh, have formed or have structured or have assisted, you know, um, me in structuring uh, the way I'm thinking. So for today, when I, I said make you work, I, I'm, I'm not sure what is the area of your gifting and what you aspire to be. But what is very important is we're gonna, you know, get deeper into the presentation. Um, I want this to be something that you define for yourself. There's a work that as an individual you have to do. And how you define success for yourself, it has to come from you. That, that's very, very important. I think contentment and fulfillment um, comes from when you are really internally happy for who you are and what you are doing. Uh, for, for someone, success might mean you know, doing great in business, for someone it might mean education, for someone it might mean being a housewife, for someone it might mean uh, being a scientist. So it's different meaning for different people. But for me, what has been very important while I'm navigating through the ever-changing future is to define success for myself. Uh, whether the next person agrees or doesn't agree. Um, but I think it's very, very important before then I can do the work, before I can work on the being part because the combination of those two, there's something you have to do, there's some action that you have to do. And they, 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 there is um, a way also of being that you have to be. Um, so those are very important. So the key points for this presentation is more on the belief system, on habits, on self-leadership, mentorship and coaching. And lastly, we'll talk about the measure of success. I'm not sure whether in the presentation that's the first <laughs> item that we have to look at. Um, these are certain principles that I've extracted from my book. But how they got into my book, um, as a person, I'm more of a student for life. I go through life observing and taking notes. So part of what I'm sharing is the notes that I've managed to take throughout. And also, you know, when I listen, when I learn and some from experience, when I listen to those that came before us, that uh, for me, I consider themselves as successful in their area of gifting, I do jot, you know, uh, the principles. I think there are certain principles that are universal, whatever area, whatever sphere, but if you apply certain principles, they do yield to the positive the results. So for me, it's been about principles. What, what makes the greats greats? Um, that is what I have been looking. The people that we call them gold, you know, the greatest of all times. What type of mindset, you know, how, how do they embrace life as it comes? You know, 
with different, you know, um, victories and also with different challenges. So that's what I was actually looking at, the principles, the mindset, before we even move to the skill set, the fundamentals, before we move to the complex. So I'm very interested in the basics, what makes one get such results. That's what I'm more interested in. So that's part of what I'll be sharing today, the certain principles that, you know, some have also practiced and they have worked for me. Uh, and some have learned from, you know, um, the people that came before us. Um, then the measure of success, what is the measure of success? Success is being who you were designed to be and doing all that you were designed to do. That is actually from my second book, which was launched last year in August. And I saw it be fitting for today to read, uh, especially the first, um, the two paragraphs, the, 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 the first and the second. For Anne, a class eight student, success is finishing top of your class academically. Yusuf sees success as getting a teacher education. Omandi believes having a steady job and stable income in order to provide for his family is the measure of success. What is your measure? Remember I said, I want us to define these things for ourselves. I want it to come in from, from, from inside, you know, um, before we see the results. So just think for a minute, what is your measure? How do you define success? Or what will be your ideal life? Because one thing that is clear is that <clears throat> What we see from the above is that success means different things to each of us. For me, success is being who you were born to be and doing that which you were born to do. If you're in this group, <clears throat> with hard work and dedication, you will almost certainly live up to your full potential. This is about operating in the area of your God-signaled gifting. To me, success is intertwined with your God design. Having a design signifies that there is a purpose. Dr. Miles Monroe put it this way. Do not judge what you call success by the masses, but judge it by God's instructions to your life and how well you are following them. That is success. I think uh, this starting point for this presentation is crucial. Um, it's crucial because it's, to, it's so that we understand the role at the individual level that we ought to play. Let's move forward to the belief system. The way we operate is the results of our belief system. What you believe to be true about yourself, will see it manifesting in your actions. And one thing we cannot change, we cannot change, at some point, you cannot change how you were brought up. However, the people and the books that you read can be a game changer. How do we shift our paradigm of thinking? Mostly the impact on who surrounds you, not just who surrounds you, but who you listen to. How do you see the noise? And also the books that you read, how do you select the books that you read and how do you, do you make sure that you practice what you have learned? Those are the game changer because sometimes we don't become our potential, not because we're not gifted, but even if you're a lion by association, you can behave as a ship. So, um, it is very important that we sharpen our belief system. 
Ushapin how or what we believe to be true about ourselves. We, and we then become our potential. But that requires some work from your side, the individual responsibility. Then item number three is about habits. This is also extracted from my book. It is actually what page 136 and the nugget um, 89. One thing that I've observed is that successful people swear by habits. Uh, what they do on daily basis and the consistency. It's more of incremental changes that make their significant impact. Uh, so um, in your area of gifting, what habits do you want to adopt? And it's not something that you have to jump, you know, it's more like a, a needle point type of steps. But when you combine all those steps through, you know, the time that you've been taking them, after a while, you see that they are making such a significant impact. So it's the basics, it's the fundamentals, it's your daily routine. What is your daily routine? Where are you going? Are the habits that you're having aligned with the destiny that you're trying to get to? So at this point, I had to share what Stephen Covey actually, you know, wrote in, in, in his book, um, The Habits of Successful People, Seven Habits. One of them, he talked about being proactive. Begin with the end in mind. Put first things first. Think win-win. Seek first to understand than to be understood. Synergy, sharpen the soul. Then in these, I have summarized them. The first one being proactive, know where you are going and plan ahead to avoid surprises, to avoid being reactive and take responsibility for yourself. Do not blame others. Yes, it might be a fact that so-and-so disappointed you. It might be a fact so-and-so, you know, gossiped about you, backbite and all those things. But at the end of the day, that should not hinder your progress. You are responsible for your own progress. So it's very important to be proactive in your own journey and don't shift, don't blame others. You are responsible for your own journey. Number two, begin with the end in mind. This highlights the importance of imagination and the determination to follow through till the avenged end. That's very important. Um, the, the importance of imagination, the importance of solitude, and just, you know, think and see, you know, why, where you are driving towards, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Number three, put first things first. Know your priorities and don't be swayed away from them. Don't be prioritized your schedule, but schedule your priorities. Number four, think win-win. This embraces the belief system, belief again, that there is plenty for all of us. You don't have to lose for me to win. And I do not have to lose for you to win. This belief system leads to synergistic uh, partnerships where both you and I uh, win bigger. This is very important that um, we support each other while you are building your wall, uh, to have, you know, a group of people that have a similar vision, not necessarily doing what you're doing um, and supporting and, and knowing that when you win, I also win. When I win, you also win. That is a very great belief system while you are navigating the ever-changing future. Number five, seek first to understand then to be understood. So here, Stephen Covey was talking about, or is talking about, 
Um, uh, so, so in summary, I, I said, uh, I'm sure you've heard of people that have said, if I were you, I would do this, 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 before really understanding the situation or having asked for permission to share your thoughts. A listening ear is worth more than a million unsolicited piece of advice. You know, sometimes we're so uh, fast to offer advice and we don't even understand or we when actually never going to be able to understand, you know, a certain situation. But sometimes just listen to the person if they are talking to you. Because sometimes you want to listen, but someone is not talking to you. So you just let that go. But seek first to understand before you are understood, before you respond, understand what someone is telling you. Uh, synergy, that's very important. Alignment, you know, uh, on a daily basis, which goes hand in hand with, with habits. Sharpen the soul, take care of yourself, eat well, exercise, work on your emotional intelligence and leave room for, for love, for laughter, to play, solitude, stillness, and nature. So for this, this is very important, it has to do with habits. So I had to share what Stephen Covey wrote in the seven habits of successful people. I think for me, they speak uh, volumes and it's things that we can practice no matter what you define success, no matter what your area of gifting is. Uh, but if we, are, we want you know, to have those impactful results, those positive results, it's things that we can practice you know, on daily basis you know, with needle point type of steps. It's not about jumping, but it's steps that and, and habits that we want them to be uh, instilled in us on daily basis. Then number four is about the importance of self-leadership. It's so important. We can talk about collective leadership, but um, the most important type of leadership that I think for me is important is self-leadership, the ability to lead yourself from one point to personal uh, development and continuous growth. That is self-leadership. And I do have examples where I've seen this working for me. Um, be it, um, you know, working with this team. Uh, this is a team uh, from the National Research Foundation and we used to tour the country. Um, the project was facilitated by NRF, um, but it was different, you know, um, lecturers, researchers, team members, you know, um, that are passionate about science. And we used to encourage students to enroll for science and especially to take it through to the PhD level. But this, to get into these platforms, it starts with self-leadership. Yes, now we're working with a team and we're talking about collective leadership, but before you get to this point, there's an importance of self-leadership. Another platform that I'm also working uh, on is at the international level now, working with the young academies of sciences. But before you get to the global level, you said at the, at the at, at, at individual level where you are able, you know, to, to lead yourself. Another one, I think that for me, it represented this form of leadership or oh, the starting point is self-leadership is when I completed my PhD at the University of Witwatersrand, Vets. Uh, so these are my two supervisors, the people that were behind, you know, the sins. But before you even get to this point, it starts with going to enroll, you know, for your BSc, going to enroll for your doctorate. But not only there, taking yourself out, you know, to, to the lab and do those experiments. And also, how do you motivate yourself when the experiments are not working? How do you motivate yourselves when the thesis now itself, you know, you don't have any energy to, to, to write? Uh, so this is very, very, it's a skill that is very important. Before we get to the collective, before we work with people, how do we embrace self-leadership? How do we lead ourselves? from one point to personal growth and to continuous development. That is very, very important. The skills that I think we're not talking about making you work. Um, it's a skill that is worth embracing. Um, then another one is mentorship and coaching. I must say here, for me, for a long time, 
I was focusing on mentorship. I was not aware of coaching. I thought that coaching was actually uh, reserved for, 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 for a people cut from a different cloth. And that cloth for me was pot. I thought that coaching was for people that were in sport. I'm just gonna explain now the difference between the two. Okay, it was when I got to the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research that I was introduced to coaching in, in science and education. Um, when, when, when someone is mentored, I've written uh, about this, it's actually in page 147 of my book. When someone is mentoring you, it's more about transferring a skill. It's more about someone who knows more in where you're going. Um, it, it can be when you're at master's level, you want to go to PhD level. Someone already has a PhD. When you are undergrad, you want to go to master's. Someone already has a master's. Um, I, I'm making these examples because for me, I'm more in the education and training sector uh, and trained as a scientist uh, in chemistry. So, hence I'm making such examples. So. For you, you, definitely, it might be something different. Uh, so for, for a business person, someone definitely has made uh, his mark or her mark in such an arena. Um, that, that is more of mentorship, someone who knows more in where you're trying to get in and pouring that skill into you. Now, coaching, coaching is more about someone who asks you to tap into your greatness. Um, a coach um, is that person who in a way makes you to see the picture. Since you are in the picture and you can't see yourself, that person assists you to. So, so for me, um, I, was, I was actually invited at the Council for Scientific and Natural Research when I was I think it was my first year there as a, as a researcher. And our um, director believes so much in coaching and mentorship. And he invited the staff for this. And when I was listening, you know, I, I remember that one of the very first assignment that we're given was writing about yourself. What can you tell the world if you were given, I think he said 30 seconds or one minute, what will be your message? And he also, you know, expanded and said in five minutes, if you were, you know, standing um, on the world stage, what will be your message? So we used to be given, you know, different assignments uh, to unpack, to think, uh, more about what is it that you're trying to achieve in life? What is it that you are working towards? What is your voice? And how can you sharpen that? So I'm just going to read what Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, uh, well, what, <clears throat> what I've written about Martin Luther King Jr. as a mentor and a number of people that I saw uh, as successful. And so it's an excerpt for the book from, from, from the book, and it reads as follows. Martin Luther King Jr. was co-shaped by Howard Thurman. Oprah Winfrey sat under the, um, the teachings of uh, Maya Angelou. So great people are being coached by great people. I had heard of mentors, but the thought that people outside of the sport, what I've just shared now, world being called sinful rain to me. When I happened to start reading about these um, relationships of Martha Angelou, of Howard Thurman, you know, and Martin Luther King, and, and these are the topics that, you know, we discussed when I was at the CSIR. For me, that, that was the journey, if I can put it, that activated the hunger and appetite for greatness. That is when I started being coached. So there is a very important, it's, it's crucial, it's critical, you know, to have a mentor in whatever you're doing. 
it's also very important to have a coach. A mentor can be a coach, but sometimes someone is good in mentorship, not coaching. So you have to, to look for yourself, who can be that person? And some of my mentors is people that I've never had a conversation with through books. Uh, I managed, you know, to, to learn what they had to offer. However, in terms of coaching, um, so far I have had two coaches my entire life. Um, in terms of coaching, for me, I, I don't think I'll have many coaches, although I have more mentors when it comes to mentorship, because there's so many things that I want to learn um, as I'm navigating, you know, um, true. So you'll define for yourself, you know, um, who to mentor, who to coach, but depending on what, or on, on what you want to achieve with your life. Um, okay, well, I've talked about people that have mentored me. I've talked about people that have coached me. I, I thought that, you know, um, I saw it befitting to also share. Uh, this is Prof. Mokhalaka, um, freshman. She's now the dean uh, at um, Univen. Uh, when we met, we met at 20 Invest of Technology, and she has been my mentor. She's still my mentor. Uh, she was the HOD then in chemistry. And here we're posing actually for a magazine or a booklet, if I can put it that way, that uh, was launched by TUT. Uh, this was 2016. Um, I think it was July, June, somewhere there, and or August. Um, so we were posing because we're featured in the book. It's called Inspire. So I've learned a lot from this lady. I'm still learning actually uh, from Prof. Debu Heng. Um, so, so it's a journey, it's a process, you know. Um, so for her, it's someone that I've met. Uh, it's not someone that I've read through a book. It's someone that I've walked the journey with. It's someone that I'm still work, working actually the journey uh, with. Another two ladies that have mentored me is um, Dr. Andrew. Uh, Dr. Andrew, I met her in uh, Silicon Valley when I was, I was there for professional mentorship, actually, in, in Santa Clara. This is in California, America. So I was there for a month and I met Dr. Dia and Dr. Andrew. That was um, a professional mentorship. They were away that they were mentoring me. Um, so I've learned a lot from this lady. I'm still learning a lot. It's, it's a process, it's a journey. And one of my coaches is Dr. Joe Molete. This was the director at uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. And I, I was there from 2009 to 2014. So when I was there, he's actually the one who introduced me to coaching. Prior to meeting him, I've never had a coach. And this, as, as I said before, a coach is more of a person that is actually helping you to tap into your greatness. Um, so this is the person that activated the hunger and appetite for greatness for me. Um, yes, I was very aware that I wanted to be successful, but I didn't know how to articulate what it, mean, it meant for me. I didn't know what it was in a picture. I didn't know also, you know, uh, that there was a greatness, you know, that was inside me that I had to tap into it. So he definitely gave us a number of assignments, a number of books. It's a lot of work that you have to do <laughs> as an individual, but it's so worth it. So what I've shared today is actually extracted from my second book, which was launched in August 20. It is called 100 Nuggets, Pearls of Wisdom. Um, and I hope by sharing what I've shared with you today, it will um, activate a hunger and appetite for you for greatness. It will activate a hunger and appetite 
for you to tap into your greatness. And um, if you've already, you know, tapped into it, I hope that it will encourage and motivate you to soar even higher in your area of gifting. And once again, happy Mother's Day. May you be all that you were created to be. Thank you.